Hi, my name is Casey Browning. I'm the owner here at Retroactive Arcade and I'm going to talk to you a bit about JAMA, uh, the universal connectivity of it as well as the different types, uh, the pinouts and the wiring diagrams for JAMA. I'll go over a little bit of history as well and uh, how they connect to the power supply and so forth. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off with JAMA harnesses. Uh, a lot of you guys, if you've been looking into arcades or have built an arcade before and stuff, are pretty familiar of the layout of this and what it's all about. But uh, for all of you that are just getting into it or somebody that just wants some clarification on what it is and the way it works, is this in itself is the definition of JAMA. So it's a universal connector, 28 pin connector, that connects your power to all the buttons on your console. Um, it's universal in the sense that it's been pretty much used from the beginning of time of arcades. They use JAMA connections that these plug directly to the PCB board. Uh, quick things that you should know about these ones is the different types. Uh, there are a few and I'll tell you what they are. <clears throat> this is a Suzo HAP JAMA harness. Everything is labeled from 1 to 28. It tells you that it's the component side and the solder side, which I'll tell you all about in a bit. Uh, as well as it has labeling everywhere on here. So you've got your power, your right side, your button layout, your map, whatever. And it's got some quick connects and stuff. It's actually a really handy, high quality JAMA cable. Uh, it'll run you anywhere between $40 and $50 American. So it is on the high end versus some of the other ones that are going to run you $10, $12, $15, bucks, uh, which we're getting into on this side. These are the Chinese ones. They're mass produced. Some of them are good. Some of them are not. Um, usually the only thing that you can tell as a difference is the uh, wires that are connected to the 28 pin layout. So this one basically all the wires are connected so you've got players 5 and 6 buttons over here and uh, you also have your coin counter and your test buttons on this side as well. Uh, this one you can obviously see that it's missing those. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you a diagram and a bit of what they do and why. Um, but uh, at first glance I'm going to tell you right now that this is your ground then you're going to look at your positive 5 you got your earth ground 5 you've got your 12 volt and then you've got another daisy chain of ground that goes around onto this side here uh, when you're connecting to a JAMA board with a multi game board you're never really going to use this uh, ground earth or sorry earth ground negative 5 so we usually just cut it off, so we usually use these type of harnesses that have everything cut off, but I use one with a five and six player button. Okay, so as I said before, this is a universal harness, so the button mapping on it is the same for every one. Uh, you'll notice that some of the colors are different. Uh, maybe you can see it in the video, maybe you can't, but obviously between these two, the colors are a lot different. Um, the colors don't necessarily matter um, per se when it comes to the actual button mapping of it or the wiring diagram of these. Uh, the colors are different either because from China they just use whatever colors available at the time or uh, sometimes it just depends on the nation or, or country that it's coming from. Uh, so other than that this is the diagram. It'll come in two parts. So one basically maps out each line from front to end which is like Starting on the ground, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 28. This one's labeled from 1 to 28. So you'd be starting at the top, 1 down to 28. So it tells you exactly which each one. So you just find the color, send it to the corresponding micro switch or joystick or anything like that that you're putting it to. And then uh, some of these have video as well, which give you the CGA. So you can actually cut this off and connect it to a different connector. Or you can use this one if it'll fit. I've never found one that it'll actually work with. And uh, your speakers come off this as well. Uh, a lot of the JAMA boards and stuff that we use, uh, I don't use the video off of here unless I'm uh, retrofitting or refurbishing uh, an old school cabinet with a CGA monitor. Uh, usually on the JAMA boards and stuff that we use, I just use the VGA directly off the board for the monitor. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go over the quick layout of, of the actual uh, JAMA harness itself 
just on the power side. I'm not going to tell you what all this is. This is, diagram is available on our website. Under JAMA harnesses, there will be a PDF diagram or wiring diagram. Uh, you can just download it anytime. So if you're interested in one of these and you want to see the diagram first, I highly suggest that you go to our website and uh, do that. It should be labeled on the video. Take this away for a quick second. <clears throat> now the power side, uh, the reason why I want to mention this is that uh, most JAMA boards when you see the PCB, I'm going to go through a few of those in a sec, but uh, you can see that they're keyed, so it's got like a space there. Uh, the JAMA harness itself is not keyed, as you can see. Um, there's only one way to put this on, and this side here uh, w w that's keyed, that's smaller, is labeled that way to show you power. So that's your power and ground side, so that would actually flip around to that, so you can see how the ground and your positive 5 earth 5 and your 12 volt will connect to this side alone and then they all just universally go off of these so I'm going to get into some JAMA boards now for you okay so I'm going to show you a couple of JAMA boards these aren't all of them but this is many of them and the setup like you can see is well hopefully you can see it that they are pretty universal uh, no matter what way they look so this here is a 60 in 1 card there's also one that looks pretty identical to it that's the 19 in 1 uh, as you can see, the JAMA pinout is the same as over here. So this one is a quadruple X in one, so it'll have anywhere from 1,000 games in it to 3,000 games in it, uh, depending on the hard drive that's available for it. Uh, also with this one here, this one's a 619 Game Elf, and then this one underneath it is a Pandora's Box 3. Uh, it's got 512 games in it. <clears throat> I just wanted to show this as a side note, is a JAMA switcher. Now, if you could possibly fit these boards onto here, uh, you can put two on one, and it comes with a remote for the inside of the cabinet that'll allow you to change between the two JAMA boards. Uh, it's really handy with these 16 ones because they don't have the case, uh, and then you can have a 16 one or a 19 in one just because these game these boards come preloaded with games that you might not necessarily uh, agree with all the games on the board, and you just want to have a little bit more. Uh, these ones are not editable really in any way so you kind of get what you get okay so I know I said that the JAMA harness is universal it is on its plug-in so with that being said there's power that comes into it directly that will actually power the JAMA board itself uh, you can use an arcade power supply uh, to do any of those which is looks exactly like this there's different grades of them there's some from China there's some from everywhere but this one specifically is from Suzo Hap uh, <clears throat> now, it's not the only way some of these boards can be powered. So if you don't have uh, arcade power supply, maybe you have a computer power supply. Some of these boards allow for a Molex connector to come in uh, right off of the power supply into the JAMA board itself. Um, <clears throat> so then it won't actually power through the JAMA connector itself. Some of them need to have the computer Molex power supply coming off of a computer power supply. This one here needs all the all the pins out of it. Some of them break off a four section here for these as well that'll allow you to just connect that and then you leave the other four pin hanging out. They don't get connected. This specific board does. It needs all that. It's a 2019 or 2001. <clears throat> okay, as I was talking about before, I was, I was mentioning about the video for this being the CGA and then only using the VGA that we only use the VGA coming out of these boards which are shown here so you got your VGA here you got your VGA there and you guys got your VGA down there uh, I get a bit way better picture and all that through VGA obviously so we use it because we build them from scratch but uh, if you're dealing with a CGA monitor this works really well you still might need a CGA to VGA or VGA to CGA converter depending on which way you're going uh, which are both available on our website as well so I mentioned before about solder side and component side, or component side and solder side. That refers to the sides of the board on your PCB. So component side has all the parts and everything sticking up from the top, so it's usually the top side. And the solder side is all your solder points on the bottom. What that can be referred to on your harness as well is player one and player two. Component side is always player one, solder side is always player two. You'll see that on the instructions downloaded from our website for the wiring diagram. Uh, it'll tell you, it'll ask for component side and player one and that kind of good stuff. Now you'll know the difference between the two. So I'm going to try to cover as much as I can on these JAMA cards. Um, <clears throat> I want to go over the dip switch settings on here. So 
you're going to find these outside dip switches, these manual dip switches, on any one of these JAMA boards that you can possibly buy. Some of them have only the four, some of them have two of these dip switches. And what these dip switches do is they allow for your settings to be changed manually from putting in one credit with a push button or if you put in a quarter and however your machine's set up, uh, it'll change it to give you one credit to two, three, four, five, that kind of an idea. Uh, some of these uh, cards are universally set to to allow for specific changes like for one credit or to three some of them are five some of them can go to eight it just depends on which one it is uh, some of the other settings on there are monitor orientation uh, difficulty settings and so on and so forth with that being said these ones are manual ones if you go into the setup of these cards you can also find virtual dip switches that allow you to give a little more control so you can go into each individual games uh, on this one it's 60 games so you can go into each individual game change the lives the credits and the difficulty setting on it as well some of them you can even change like the background or the setup uh, you can make it faster so you make super pac-man super fast and that kind of thing so yeah that's pretty much it okay so i get a lot of questions about the sound on these cards how to turn the volume up and down uh, Unfortunately, the drawback to all these cards are that the potentiometer or the sound, the volume knob, is actually soldered right to the board. So if you bury these boards into your machine, you have to go in your machine, turn it up and turn it down. Uh, the potentiometer on this one is here. Uh, you would just take a screwdriver and turn it one way or the other. Or you can actually go into the setup menu inside the card and go through the whole process. And then you can um, do it digitally through using your, uh, your joysticks and your buttons to change the sound on it. Um, these ones here actually have the pot on the outside of the card that you can turn and go from there. This one actually has two, uh, that one's for loudness and one's for balance uh, between the speakers. So what we do to get around it is I usually take for these cards and this game elf, we actually desolder the potentiometer and run wires to the outside of the cabinet and put a potentiometer on the outside of it. If you're not comfortable with that, you're going to have to live with the setup that it has already. Okay, so I want to spend a minute on this one uh, for these quadruple and X and one JAMA boards because uh, they are a little bit more complicated. They look more complicated than they actually are. Um, <clears throat> if you're just running a two-player setup, the way it's kind of plugged in right now with the JAMA harness going out to your buttons, power supply, uh, and everything, uh, this does need a separate power supply to the power side of this to power up the top board the power supply that's on the bottom that would use a computer power supply uh, that gets plugged in directly to run the main board and CPU at the bottom uh, the top needs its own power supply now you can splice into a computer power supply and run your your uh, 12 5 and ground off of that as well so it can use the same one but you still need to go directly to a power supply with that one uh, now, for programming purposes, if you're running your two-player, you need to have this uh, IDE cable plugged into here, as well as your programming board. So that would just plug in directly like so, so you can kind of see it there. Um, <clears throat> it gives you a lot of options here to go into setup. You can go back, save, uh, previous, and hide stuff, and you can make your own game lists and do a bunch of things like that. If you are going to do a four player with these machines, or these JAMA boards, they're pretty much the only JAMA board that it's gonna really allow you to do a four player setup. Uh, what you have to do is have another harness available, and that goes from here to your three and four player buttons. So you would set them up exactly like you did in the uh, wiring schematics for your player one and player two. Now the wiring schematics on this harness would just be player one would be player three and player two would be player four so it should keep it pretty pretty simplistic for you so that's just a basic summary of the way JAMA harnesses work and the way they connect uh, it's a small kind of example of the different types of boards um, a lot of that information you're not really going to find online I've been looking and uh, a lot of this is trial and error and figured it out on our own uh, once you do it and once you figure it out, it actually is pretty simple. Uh, hopefully you'll take a project on yourself and we're going to go over how, what 
the differences between JAMA and MAME so that you can find out a preference that works best for you. JAMA is pretty much plug and play, ready to go, turn it on, turn it off, arcade for dummies kind of thing. And uh, MAME, you have to get into a bunch of programming buttons and do all that stuff. JAMA will allow you to map some buttons, but uh, uh, MAME is pretty much strictly mapping all those buttons and doing it yourself. Yeah, so if you're pretty hands-on and computer savvy, that might be the way you want to go. Plus it gives you a lot more emulators and a lot more games to do whatever. These ones are pretty much specific to the arcade type games that were found in machines prior, so or in the last 20, 30 years. So um, they are pretty much MAME only, uh, which I'll get into in another video on what MAME's all about. Um, hope this was informative and thanks for watching.